What up, Vapesters? Welcome back to the channel, and I have got a great story time video for you guys today. So I recently reconnected with a buddy of mine from like 20 years ago. We had originally met when we were in college, both around maybe 20 years old. And we were down at Starbucks the other day and we started reminiscing about the time we both just about died riding a motorcycle, both of us, across the mountain passes here in Washington State on I-90. And this is not only one of the scariest things to ever happen to me, but honestly the closest I have ever come to certain death. And I'm going to tell you guys all about it today on Indoor Smokers. Don't go nowhere. So all right guys, this is something that happened decades ago. It was when I was about 20 years old. Me and my buddy, we were college friends from when we were going to Wenatchee Valley College, and he was spending the summer at my parents' house. My father who moved out, all the kids had moved out. It was a big five bedroom, three bathroom house, and my mom was living in it all by herself. So I decided if I could get the house cleaned out, because of course it had 20 years and four kids worth of garbage and shit mounted up in there. If my buddy and I could get that house cleaned out, I made a deal with my dad that if I could get it cleaned and sell it, I could get the commission off the house that would have gone to the realtor. So all summer my buddy was over there and I was actually working a job, he wasn't. So I'll give him credit that he was the one who really did most emptying out of that house. I think we ended up taking total in U-Haul trips to the dump 12,000 pounds. I think that's six tons worth of just fucking accumulation, man. My mom was a little bit of a hoarder. So anyone who's dealt with that, you know what that looks like. But anyways, at the end of the summer, rather than get paid, my buddy had a motorcycle he had found that he really wanted to get. So my dad ended up buying him the motorcycle as his payment for doing all of the work on the house. I ended up getting the money that would have gone to the commission and I bought the land that I lived on for seven years up on top of a mountain with that money. But anyways, that's a different story. So my buddy gets his motorcycle and it's great. He loves it. It wasn't the biggest bike. I believe it was 1100 CC. I was somebody, the only motorcycle I'd ever ridden, if you could call it that, was a 50 CC Passport, one of those little mopeds. They say it's only a moped if you pedal it and I never pedaled. But still, basically, I don't know motorcycles. But my friend's a good, experienced motorcycle guy. He'd ridden motorcycles for years. And so the only way we could get that motorcycle back to where we lived, which was on the east side of the mountains, he lived in Spokane at the time. I was in Wenatchee living out of my truck at the time. So we had to get the motorcycle across the pass. So, of course, we're the geniuses we are. Think, let's just go ahead and ride it. I'll ride on the back. We'll just, you know, do a nice it's summer day. Shouldn't be any problem. And we'll just take it over to Wenatchee, and then he'll drop me off and drive on the Spokane. So on the day we are heading out, it's probably about 80 degrees, and the genius I am, which we we're both dressed about the same, but I'm literally wearing shorts and a t-shirt. That's it. And this little old motocross style helmet, the kind that has like the little visor on it. It was just a loose mask held on by like one bolt, just a rickety old insufficient helmet and that's all I'm wearing man shorts a t-shirt and that old ratty helmet he's actually got like a decent real full face you know motorcycle helmet but neither one of us are wearing leathers any protective gear or anything like that so the day comes that we are gonna head out on the trip probably smoked a couple bowls in preparation for the ride got on the motorcycle I hop on the back we're cruising, you got to go through downtown to where you get the exit to get on the I-90 that's going to take us across the mountain pass and over to eastern Washington. So we're going through the congested, you know, just heavy ass traffic through downtown. It's a little bit nuts riding on the back of that motorcycle and such heavy traffic. But my buddy's doing good, nothing to concern me, you know, he's handling everything, seems like he knows what he's doing. So I'm actually pretty confident on this ride. I'm not too worried about it. We get up. So the speed limit, I believe, was 70, and we were probably doing about 75 to 80 most of the time, you know, just keeping up with traffic. 
and we make it most of the way over. I mean, it is tripping me out a little bit, you know. Every once in a while you look down at that concrete going by and thinking, man, there's not a lot of room for error on this thing. But we're making it no problem. We get across the pass where you would think would be the worst part of the trip, basically without issue. We're coming down the other side of the pass. And I notice up ahead of us quite a ways, maybe like three, two, three hundred yards ahead of us, there's a truck, a pickup truck. And I notice something like comes off the back of the truck and it's just floating like down to the ground. And it looked like I was thinking a sheet or a blanket or something. And I kind of lean forward to my buddy and I go, watch out, man. And he keeps cruising, man. He's going right at this thing. And I'm kind of thinking like, well, maybe he knows what the fuck he's doing. He thinks we just can ride right over it. But then it's like my mind, you know, is going through all the freaking possibilities of what could happen. And I'm thinking, man, that blanket could get caught up in the fucking tires or something, you know, causes to fucking skid out. So right as we're getting closer to it, I smack him on his leg a couple times. And I go, watch out, man. And he, at the last minute, swerves that bike we missed this freaking thing by i kid you not no more than three inches and just as we get close enough to miss that thing i look down and i see it's a fucking mattress either a mattress or a box spring i can swear which but i will tell you either way we were fucked if we hit that goddamn thing dude no joke they would have been scraping us up off that highway with a freaking shovel man there's nothing else to even argue about man there is no way doing 75 80 miles an hour in shorts and a t-shirt we were going to come away from that thing with any skin left on our bones but we do miss it boom and i'm kind of thinking like you know my friend always was kind of crazy guy you know cocky showing off and so i think he's just deliberately you know waited till the last second to miss it just to scare the shit out of me or something so, I mean, I'm tripping out, I ain't gonna lie, but I managed to kind of calm down. I'm thinking, oh, well, dude, he's fucking nuts, you know? I'm a little bit pissed that he's putting our life in danger, but other than that, I think, all right, we're cool. So I'm holding on, you know, normally just riding from behind him. <clears throat> and we have to go about another 30, 40 miles before we come to the nearest town, which was Clay Ellum. So we come into Clay Ellum, get off the exit. He says, I'm going to pull off here. I figure we're going to get gas or something. But anyways, he pulls off to the shoulder. At that time, I'm not sure if it's there anymore, but there was like the world's biggest Santa sled. It was probably 10 feet in the air where the bench was on the sled. Kind of just a cool feature left over from Leavenworth's Christmas Town pageant or something. Who knows? But we pull over there. We're always looking for kind of like cool, neat places to smoke bowls, you know. So we climb up on that freaking sled, man and we're sitting up there about 10 feet in the air, you know, passing a pipe back and forth smoking. And I can tell he's like tripping out, dude. And of course, we're both, you know, like, holy shit, dude, that was close up there. But he's really seems like he's tripping out. And then he starts telling me like, man, you think you could ride the motorcycle? You could just take us into Wenatchee from here. And I'm like, dude, I've ridden this thing like three times. And I'm like shocked he even asked me to do it. So I'm like, what the fuck's going on, man? And he looks at me and tells me, if you hadn't tapped on my leg that second time and said, watch out, I was planning on riding right over it. He said he thought it was a piece of cardboard or a piece of plywood or something that had come down. And he thought he could go right over it. And it wasn't until that last second when he dodged it that he noticed about the exact same time I noticed that that thing was a mother freaking mattress. So then I start freaking tripping out and I'm like, what? You were going to ride over that thing? You weren't just fucking waiting until the last minute to miss it? And he's like, hell no, man. He was like, you fucking saved both our lives, man. If you hadn't said, watch out that second time, fuck, man. <clears throat> So anyways, I still got to convince him, like, look, man, I can't fucking drive a motorcycle in as close as you came to killing us. You know, it was a fluke, man. It ain't going to happen again. So you're going to have to ride it the rest of the way in. But, I mean, we were both fucking tripping. So anyways, we finished smoking the bowls. Don't ever do this, kids. I'm telling you, this is not glorifying the activity, man. This is a cautionary tale. But anyways, we go from the last 50 miles, we have to go over Blewett Pass now, another pass to get into Wenatchee, but we managed to make it no problem, and then we stay the night at a motel there, see, and you would think this was the end of the story, but it's actually a little bit more. 
So another buddy of mine, fucking crazy, really good motorcycle rider. He's actually got like a CRX crotch rocket and shit. I seen that guy pop wheelies doing fucking 50 miles an hour on the highway. <clears throat> He comes up to visit. I called him up and said, hey, man, we got into town, blah -de blah come on up, visit us at the motel, we'll smoke some bowls, hang out. So he comes by, ends up crashing there, and the next morning, he wants to take my buddy's motorcycle into work. He's working at one of the fruit sheds, and my buddy doesn't want to do it, man. It's, a, you know, his brand new motorcycle, he just got it. You know, we already almost wrecked it one time, and he's like, no, man, I ain't cool with that. I'm like, come on, man, fucking Pat's cool with this. We used to actually call him Mad Boy, like the old Rage Against the Machine song, and Mad Boy grips a microphone with a fist full of steel. But anyways, I finally convinced him to let Pat take his motorcycle and go into work at the fruit shed. We planned to meet up at Joe's Log Cabin Tavern, and yeah, this is a little hick town in East, this ain't Seattle, this is Eastern Washington. But anyways, we're going to meet up there after he gets off work at like 5.30. So we're waiting and waiting, it gets to be like 5.45, 5.50, still no sign of Pat, my buddy's tripping. I'm like, look, man, he ain't going to steal your fucking motorcycle, dude. We know where he lives, you know, he'll be here, just, hey, just chill out. And right around 6 o'clock, all of a sudden, coming through the front door is my buddy Pat. And man, this motherfucker looks disheveled. That's the first thing I noticed. He's holding his arm like this. And his hair it was always like pulled back in a tight ponytail when he was going to work and shit. But I noticed his ponytail was like hella loose. His hair was all puffed out like this. Face was hella red. And he's holding his arm looking all fucked up. He comes up and says, man, I got T-boned in an intersection back there a few blocks by an old lady. Fuck, I think I broke my shoulder. And then all of a sudden, I think he's just fucking with us because my buddy was so scared to let him take the motorcycle. So I was like, ah, come on, bitch. Knock it off. And he's like, no, I'm fucking serious, man. And then I was like, oh shit, dude, we got to get you to the hospital. He was like, not till I've had a few beers. Fuck that. We're going to be stuck down there for hours. So we ended up going through about two or three pictures with the three of us. Then I call up his mom to come down and get us. Because, of course, now none of us got any fucking way to get around. The motorcycle's totaled. He ended up pushing that thing like three blocks up to the fucking bar where we were meeting at. And it wasn't driving no more. So anyways, his mom takes him and fucking gets to the hospital. You know, he get, ends up being a broken collarbone. He gets the sling and shit. Then we go back to his storage unit and smoke some more bowls. He actually lived out of his storage unit in the back of his truck with a canopy on the back for about three freaking years, man. That motherfucker was committed. And on a little bit of a side note, this was a cool motherfucker, man. And then I think the next day, we actually went rock climbing. Of course, he couldn't climb or anything, but he could still belay you with just the one hand, the left hand belay. But this guy, even that way, I would still trust this guy with my life, man. He was that kind of guy. Fucking awesome, but always fucking with you. <clears throat> always making you think you were going to die, just like my other friend, which is why I thought he was fucking with me on the motorcycle. But anyways... <clears throat> But one of the funny things I remember with Pat, one of the first times I was up on probably about a 50-foot ledge on a 100-foot climb we were doing, he's belaying me from the bottom with the rope over the top, you know, tied to my harness. And he ends up letting enough slack go from the rope so that he can lay all the way flat on his back. He's still got the brake on the rope, you know, so he can stop me if I'm falling. But then he pretends he's sleeping, closes his eyes, puts his hat down over him, laying on his back. So when I look down off the fucking rock, I'm like, what the fuck, man? Get up! Get up! Anyways, he is dying laughing. And that takes a special kind of guy to do that type of shit and still be somebody you trust with your life. Actually, I remember one time we were kayaking with a few buddies and we were going through, it was the Wenatchee River, it's a class three. We were going through a hole called Snow Blind. Every, this was a gnarly ass hole. Huge rock, you go over the top of it and it was all back curl. So you had to have enough momentum to get through that because the last thing you want to do is get caught and pull back in. Well, that's exactly what happened to one friend of mine. He doesn't make it quite through the hole, gets pulled back in, and the kayak starts just turning and turning. You can see he's trying to Eskimo roll to get that thing back up, but every time he does, it just gets turned. He has to do a wet exit underwater, and the kayak ends up floating out, but this fucker can't get out. He's already been underwater and flipping for too long. He's disoriented. He's out of breath, and we can see him struggling, man, and he can't get out of this freaking hole, man. He's just caught in that turbine getting pulled back in, and my buddy Pat, a.k.a. Mad Boy, actually actually runs up the shoreline of the river, up 
past the hole that we were all already on the other side of because we'd come through it, runs back up the river on the other side of the hole, jumps in the water, goes over that freaking hole with no boat, no nothing, just himself and his life vest on, gets into the hole and kicks my buddy. Boom, our other friend out of the hole. He gets plunked out. Meanwhile, Pat gets pulled down underwater, manages to crouch on the bottom and slingshot himself by pushing off the bottom of the river. Boom, out of that hole, comes swimming out. Goddamn bravest thing I've ever seen a human being do. So that guy was no joke, man. Serious, hardcore motherfucker. But anyways, that's kind of an aside. So I guess the main point is that motherfucking motorcycle was cursed. I'll tell you that, dude. It was going to be destroyed one way or another. And me and my friend Chris were just lucky. Because at least when Pat did it, I mean, he was on, you know, the small town roads doing 30 miles an hour when he got T-boned. He wasn't doing 80 miles an hour on a freaking freeway. But anyways... Those kind of stories are always fun when you live to tell the tale. And that, like I said, is definitely the closest I ever came to dying. I can think about that, which I've done over the years. Thought back to that moment, that three inches we missed that mattress by, and I swear to God, I still get chills, man. It still makes the hair on my arm stand up just thinking about it. I need a vape just doing the story time to chill a little bit. But anyways, all three of us still alive to this day, and I'm still doing stories about wiping out and having accidents on my e-bikes now, which is a little bit safer than a motorcycle. But if you guys want to check out any of those stories, you can check out how I wrecked on my e-bike over on Green Motion e-bikes. I've got a couple of story time videos over there as well. I'll put that link conveniently located right down in the crotch box for you guys after you finish this video. Click that. Make sure to go over to the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. And also, don't forget to subscribe here on Indoor Smokers if you haven't done so already. I got a couple more story time videos coming. We got a brand new product by Anakin we're going to be taking a look at. So make damn well sure you ring that little bell so you get the notifications when the videos go up. If you haven't been getting the notifications, you might want to unsubscribe, then resubscribe, click all, so you get all the notifications when the videos go up. We're going to have some good stuff coming up soon. I love you all. Thank you so much for hanging out with me for a little while, listening to my ramblings. And I will most certainly... Catch you guys right back here next time. Have a wonderful vaping day as I am out. Peace. See you next time.